Well, hello, and welcome to this very special edition of Stream Stealers, hosted by me, Mark Piker, the editor-in-chief of Playbill. Uh, I'm really excited today because we have playwright and showrunner Jessica Goldberg, whose new show, Away, just dropped on Netflix, uh, or is going to premiere on Netflix. I'm so sorry. I don't know. What is time? Really? It's September 1st. When did that happen? Well, today. All right, I have not had enough coffee. So let's bring Jessica on before I just ramble for the next 20 minutes. Hi, Marco. <laughs> Hello. Good to see you. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited to talk to you because I love I love getting to, to talk to any playwright who has moved on to TV and has worked extensively in both because I think that those are such parallel, but uh, inter parallel careers that intersect in such interesting ways. Yes, I mean you're seeing. I think you're seeing so many playwrights go go to TV because you know you can deal in character. You can tell these like really deep character roles that's on television now. So it's really exciting. And you don't have to worry about an intermission. You don't have to worry about an intermission. Sometimes you have to worry about five acts, but um, you know, but but just that that breath to be able to tell this long story about a human being and human beings is so just such a fun thing to do. And now in this new day of TV, you're allowed to go in all kinds of great directions. So I have very specific questions for you, but before we get into that, I want to talk about Away. Hillary mm -hmm. Swank plays mm -hmm. an Oscar winner, two-time Oscar winner, Hillary Swank. Yeah. Yeah. Lucky plays yeah. an astronaut. Uh, and then it's, I'm just knocking everything over today. Uh, how did you, how did you pitch it? What was what was your pitch walking in? You know, um, so so I came into the project. There was already a, a script. There was a, it was based on an article, and they needed a showrunner. They needed someone to get involved. So I read it, and I was like, oh, you know, I wanted I wanted to be a part of this thing. And uh, we sat down and we started thinking, like, who who do you believe would really be an actor? You know how like sometimes in Hollywood you have like a supermodel. You know, like. <laughs> the supermodel clearly but you know you wanted to believe that someone had the mental strength and the physical strength to get to mars um and what it takes to be an astronaut so she was one of the first people i thought of and then we got very lucky because she came into the to meet with us and she said she had had a childhood dream to be a astronaut and so it was like this perfect marriage and then we just started collaborating on this amazing character and um and and so there she is as emma in a way it's so weird how many people grew up, I mean, guess it's not weird that people grew up wanting to be an astronaut. I grew up like 20 minutes away from NASA. So that was our go-to field trip every year. Yeah, in Texas. So for me, it was just like the thing that happened down the street where I was like, oh yeah, some people go do that. I don't know. I, yeah. Their ice cream is mediocre at best. So pass. Yeah, I've spent a lot of time either on Zoom with NASA people or we, we shot at J, J, Johnson Space Lab. Um, and you know, uh, I, it was, it was nowhere I ever imagined myself, you know, I, from a very small town upstate New York. So it, it's been quite a learning curve to learn about, about space and the universe. The one thing that I always think of from one of those field trips is it's harder to walk through a pool than it is through space. That's how they train them. They put them in the, the swimming pool. Yeah, isn't that wild to think about? Like anyone who has walked like across the length of a swimming pool, that was harder than walking through space. So we're all a little bit astronauts. Yeah, yeah we know, we kind of have it. We know how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did you, was there anything that you were shocked to discover in your research about um, astronautics? Well, you know, I was, I was shocked to discover everything. I mean, first of all, just how many brilliant minds come together to make these expeditions and how much you know we met planetary geologists scientists um engineers like just the minds the passion um we got to be at jpl when a rover landed on mars like it just blew my mind and it's actually quite humbling once you start to look out that 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 you know that there's this huge universe and um and we're just this small part of it and it, it's it's really moving these people that work so hard on 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 what's out there is it harder to be a showrunner keeping all of the plates in the air on something as technically complicated as a series about astronauts and 
having to do all of that research to begin with? Or is it more complicated to do something that's very, that's less technically complex, but more like the path? Well, you know, I think it just depends. Like some some stories are deeply personal, so you're, you know, just, you know, as as the saying goes, you know, opening a vein on the page. And some stories have like this, you know, that we brought so much of ourselves into the story, but um, you know, you you learn to sort of get the best of everybody. You find the best uh, special effects people. You find the best stunt people, and you know you learn how to collaborate in a really different way and rely on other departments in a different way. Just production designers, you know, you have to decide, you know, if Hillary's going to go in space and like deploy a a, a solar panel. Um, you know, that's like. 10 people have to get in a room and work on that for 30 hours. Like, how, what do we build? What what ropes is she on? What stunt double? You know, so it, it's, it's much more collaborative. How do you, I'm curious your answer on this, because as a playwright who did so much off Broadway a few years ago, how do you staff a writer's room? What are you looking for? Well, it really depends on the show, but for instance, with this show, um, we looked for people who had international sensibilities um, because the the crew is very international on the ship. There's Hillary, but then the the dream of the show is that the world came together to make this expedition. So there's a Chinese astronaut, a Russian, um, a Ghanaian Brit, and an Indian astronaut. So so we looked for that breath in the work and we looked for like sort of poetic voices because there's some magic realism in this show. Um, so th that was the concerns for this particular show. I think it depends on the show. Yeah. What, I mean, what do you think that you brought to writing for TV from your playwriting days? I think I brought like, um, like, you know, I, I loved character, you know, um, so I think, and and uh, you know that that strong sense that all stories come from characters, and TV allows for that because there's so much room, uh, and the characters have to be able to, you know, they can't end in an hour and fifty minutes. They have to go on for hopefully, you know, thirty episodes um, or more nowadays. More. Um, so I think that sense of character. I think um, I think when you're a playwright, you just uh, you know. I, I mean, I just because I love plays and playwrights. Like you're, you just have a rhythm that um, that you know some I, I, that I just really think is so uh, special. Well, and it must be so fun to get to write for actors, to be in the TV landscape yeah. writing for actors in that way that playwrights are so brilliant at. Yes, you know, like I went to Juilliard, so we got like to write. We, we you know, you got to write for your class, and there were ma like you know, amazing actors when I was there. So I, I started that there, where I would like write plays for certain actors, and then having a show, you get to like, you know, now you're like, oh my gosh, if we have season two, like there's this Otto Asendoa, you know, like I can't wait to write his, you know, season two scenes. There's now you're in love with these actors and these characters. My favorite part of the first season of any show is watching, it's usually episode three, episode four, maybe episode five, where you see the writers clock the actors and really get them. And all of a sudden the show clicks into place where yeah. everyone gets one another. It's so true. It's like you're setting it up for so long, you know, like you're, you're like, oh, and, then, and you're taking notes and you're trying to make everybody, you know, you're trying to serve all these things in the beginning and then around four or five, the show just suddenly settles and it yeah. and you breathe in a new way and it's really exciting. Sometimes that happens around three. I think in, in this show around episode three. That's no, I just, yeah, I just, I love, I love picturing that like on the set where it's just like, oh, oh, you're a funny person. Oh, we're gonna give you comedy to do because you were brilliant at that. That's so true. We have one of our actors, um, Mark Ivanier, who plays the Russian astronaut, he, we found out, is very funny. So a lot of jokes started coming in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I, I mean, before we have to start wrapping up, I have to ask about Passing Strange, which you adapted for HBO, which is so wild that that was 10 years ago? Yes, well, um, so I, you know what, it never got made. But yeah. Um, 
Yeah, but uh, I have adapted. You know, this is the one thing I love telling writers because they all, you know, young writers always think that you just like come out of the womb and are doing this. But the truth is, is like I have like thirty. Like this closet behind me has like thirty scripts that I've written and gotten paid and have sat. You know, <laughs> so um, yeah, that was like a beautiful project, and it was so ahead of its time because it was about a white man trying who fell in love with a black woman and tried to pass for black in like at the turn of the century. So it was an amazing story it's based on a true story. So I have, you know, like I said, this closet full of stories that have so much, I've spent hundreds of hours on and research and passion and there they sit. But then, you know, then you get the ones that happen and it's a miracle. I know, I, I think that there's such a, we make such a mistake focusing on the things that the triumphs and not the things that get us to the triumphs. Yeah. No, I, I um, did that. It, there, it, it takes, it takes piles of work. I mean, you're, unless you're one of those amazing people who just hits it out of the park. You know? uh, so. yeah, that's, that's definitely not me. No, me either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, as we wrap up final two questions, classic okay. stream stealers, final two. Uh, are there any charities or organizations that you would like to draw attention to right now? Well, you know, I'm always a, a Planned Parenthood person. Obviously, right now, Black Lives Matter. I mean, let's please, please vote. Um, I have an organization that's dear to my heart called Thistle Farms, which, um, you know, helps women who have been uh, enslaved, sexual slavery. Uh, so that's a beautiful organization to look into, and, and the women there make their own candles and perfume. Uh, and then the opposite end of the spectrum. Yeah. Uh, while we are all about to sit down and watch Away, what yeah. have you been watching in quarantine? Well, I have just watched I May Destroy You, which has destroyed me, and also just totally moved me and inspired me so that's been um that's been a treat in quarantine i was waiting until it finished so i could do them all at once because i i had a feeling that i would not be able to handle it on a week to week i couldn't handle the 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 suspense yeah so that's my that's my weekend project this weekend labor Day weekend. It. it's so special yeah and important. i'm really excited I mean, thank God there's been a ton of great TV over the last couple of months. I know. And the best thing about Away, the show, just to plug it for one second, is you can watch it for the whole family. I've never, I, I can't really, you know, write things that, like, you can sit down with your, I have a 13-year-old, like, right, we can watch it. She can watch it. So. <laughs> well, there you have it. Away for the whole family. And a very funny Russian. Yeah, funny Russians. I mean, that's all that I need. Yeah, no, it'll entertain you. And it's hopeful. It's aspirational. It's beautiful. You know. And Hillary Swank, I mean, how much have we missed her? I Truly, I was thinking about that. I'm so glad that she's back. I know. And she's so, she's, she, you see why she's um, an Oscar winner. Like this woman is like, she's a, a hero. She's a mother. She's so complex. She's, She's just a beautiful, beautiful actress. Ah, uh, well, congratulations on the show again, and thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for such a delight. All right, cool. Have a good one. All right, thank you guys. Bye.